Listen to me, daughter. The king will die. It may be months or years, but he'll not live to be an old man. And if Ramirez succeeds him, war will follow. Do you understand? The realm will not accept her. And to secure her claim, she'll have to put your children to the sword. She'll have no choice. You know it. You're no fool, and yet you choose not to see it. The time is coming, Alicent. Either you prepare Aegon to rule, or you cleave to Rhaenyra and pray for her mercy. From Providence, Rhode Island, welcome to the House of the Dragon with Mary and Blake. It's a podcast dedicated to the House of the Dragon on HBO. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about fire and blood. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. Oh, boy. Never thought I would be so happy to see the color green in my life. Agreed. What? What a... Like, oh, queen gonna queen, baby. Queen gonna queen. You know, we got quite the hashtag Game of Thrones wedding out of this episode that we were all expecting. And yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack that... Poof, it was just a lot, everybody. So we are going to get just jump on into it. But before we do, we want to remind you that we are also podcasting in time about the Rings of Power. I know there's many crossover fans. So if you have not yet subscribed to that podcast, please do. If you are safe and not, you know, driving right now, do us a favor. Screenshot your podcast app right now. Throw it up in your Instagram stories and tag us at Mary and Blake Media. We're going to reshare you. I'm going to make it a point to reshare you and give you a shout out because the way that people find out about podcasts, the best of all, is through word of mouth. So we want to thank you for that. And this episode is brought to you by MinuteWithMary.com. If you are in the market to get some new makeup or new skincare, I want you to head on over to MinuteWithMary.com or search the hashtag MinuteWithMary this month, September 2022. I do have a special on foundations, so if you are looking a little off because your foundation doesn't match you, I got you, boo. But we got to hurry up so you can save some money, right? We want to get you the discount. So search hashtag Minute with Mary, reach out to me, and I'll give you a complimentary color match. All right, Marvin, the episode 105 Mini plot recap. What do you got? A lot. A lot, everybody. So, Damon just straight up murders his wife. Done with you. (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Done. Uh, uh, King Viserys has a royal wedding. He's super excited. And uh, Rhaenyra and Laenor, they are pumped because she says, listen, we both like goose. Whatever her thing was, yeah. I took it as we both like goose, and I'm not a goose. I'm a taco. So, <laughs> well, in her analogy, she'd be a duck. Exactly. That's what I'm doing. Or she likes duck and not goose. What, I, they, what some they, animals were they involved. Both, they both like goose. <laughs> Whatever she was saying, it wasn't super clear to me at first, and then it was when I saw him um, snogging with his honey. Uh, but to me, I'm like, just say we both like hot dogs, and I'm a taco. <laughs> So how about you have hot dogs? I have hot dogs, but I don't have your hot dog. (laughs) Or maybe we have the hot dog once and we have a kid and that's it. Yeah. Or we like, maybe we can have some hot dogs together. (laughs) Throw in an eggplant. (laughs) Why not? You know, we do us. Let's have, let's do whatever we want. I just went to this cool place. You can have as many hot dogs as you want. No one's going to say nothing. Hot dog top, hot dog bottom. You go. You go. (laughs) Let's party. And... And he said, yeah, he was like, this is going to be the best wedding, the best marriage ever. They're both pumped. He tells his boyfriend and then his boyfriend decides to be the lady whistle down oh, and yes. figure out who she's been having hot dog with. Mm-hmm. And it all goes to heck. Alicent 
after that conversation with her daddy, decides, you know what? The queen's got a queen. Where's her green? And Sir Kristen gets talked to by Lady Whistledown, and he gets really mad and kills Lady Whistledown in a very, very gross way. So King Viserys says, enough of this. You're marrying right now. Yep, that's it. The end. No royal wedding for you. And Allison tells Sir Kristen, you know, don't. What what is what is Wesley say to Buttercup? You know, it'd be a it'd be a pity, a shame to ruin such a beautiful chest or breast or whatever. Sure, you know what I'm talking about. I She's do. about to. Yeah. Yes, Allison does that to Sir Kristen Cole. Yes. So, and you know what? It would be a pretty face to waste. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So this title was "We Light the Way." It was once again directed by Claire Kilner, who directed "The King of the Narrow Sea." By the way, Mary. I am in on Claire Kilner. I am down with her direction. Ooh, do tell. She gets it. And she, I, I think she gets this world, mm-hmm. and I like the different perspective that she brings. It feels like a nice light, um, not not light like airy, <laughs> but it just feels like a nice light touch. Sure, that works really a well. A light touch when you bash in yeah. someone's face. Ex, you know, when you juxtapose it against the, the 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 kind of bitter and ugly world that the Game of Thrones universe mm-hmm. is. Yeah. This was written by Charmaine de Grat, who is uh, actually quite a talented person. She's an actress, a producer, and a writer. Uh, she has written many episodes of television, including ones for the show Chambers, mm-hmm. as well as The 100, which is a very popular television show. And this is her one credit for House of the Dragon. Fabulous. All right, Marvin, uh, what are you giving you? How many flames are you giving this episode? <sighs> You know, last episode, I think I gave it a 4.5. Yes. Um, I'm going to give this one a 4.7. Oh, okay. All right, great. All right, fair Moving enough. Moving on uh, up. Yeah, you and I, uh, a rare Mary and Blake uh, media occurrence, we are actually on the same rating. Aww. Same rating, 4.7. This is one of those episodes that I, I feel like, yep, okay, we're here now. Mm-hmm. This is what we're getting at. Yes. Uh, we were actually having a similar conversation about Rings of Power in the last episode. We were like, okay, yep, this is where we're getting at. And I would say that House of the Dragon has moved quicker than Rings of Power in, 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 its, in its overall scope. But it is interesting that at – you know, halfway through the series, we finally get to uh, – for the first, ep- the first season, we finally get to the place of, oh, okay, I see it. You know, and it's halfway through the season, so that's it's an interesting point to make. We are halfway through, mm-hmm. um, halfway through the the first season of uh, House of the Dragon. Now, have they confirmed how many seasons we are going to have with House of the Dragon? Because for Rings of Power, we know it's going to be five. Well, yeah, that was the commitment that Amazon has made. Whether or not they actually go through with that commitment, I don't know. I but assume they will. I, I assume they've already they storyboarded. Too. So, no, there has not been an official commitment yet for House of the Dragon. Though, given the response to the show, uh, they have already signed on for season two. Mm -hmm. And they were so bullish on House of the Dragon that they ordered the series straight to order. Like, they didn't have a pilot. It was just like, okay, here's – go do the season. You know, and it's not rare for that to happen. uh, But it it is important when it happens like that. So, no, there hasn't been a multi-season – episode or multi-season commitment though given the response and given how bullish they are i imagine that we're going well beyond season two yeah Uh, that's just my my guess but i guess like you know with rings of power it allows me to kind of digest that this season is going to be a fifth of the story they're going to tell so yes it's taken a little longer for that ball to get rolling but Mm -hmm. i know we're only a tenth Of the way through that story. So that's what I'm trying to figure out with House of the Dragon. Do they, do they have an end goal? And maybe for our book reading friends, what percentage are we through the book? Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I see you. Well, the thing that I do know is, like, the thing that I do know for this particular episode, like, the events, the major events of what occurred in this episode, like, for example, Damon's wife's death, Rhea. Rhea's death says, well, she fell off a horse and she snapped her neck. There's no mention of Damon anywhere near it. 
you know, like they're they're taking these big things and they're they're filling the gaps. Mm-hmm. Kind of how what I, I I hate to keep making the comparison, but kind of what like Rings of Power is doing for their show, where it's like they have these. They have these. They do an improv, man, like what you and I do when we make our own canon, you know, storylines. <laughs> they have the, like these these stars in the sky, and they're saying, "Okay, how are we connecting the stars in the sky?" Uh, and then they're making a narrative out of that, right? So, so that's that. All right, you're GBG. You're good. You're bad, and you're great. Oh my good, weddings continue to bring the drama. Now, oh yes, we haven't been to a wedding in over a year, Blake and I. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been missing out on it. I don't think we're getting anything cool married wise about people I care about even in the publicity stuff you know I'm not not like a Benefer fan yeah neither am I really so I don't care to go get the magazine to see what she wore and what they ate at their million you know weddings now, if we're they talking had. the other Benefer yeah. then I'm in I mean Ben and Jennifer Garner exactly. I'm in well, but not, still not I wouldn't this even one. care I know you would get the People magazine <laughs> but Game of Thrones has set the bar high when there is a wedding ooh Something's going down. It's musical chairs, baby. Yeah. And one of you n- doesn't just not get a chair. One of you going to die. <laughs> so weddings continue to bring the drama. My bad was the initial dance between the bride and groom. The wing flapping? Oh, my gosh. Why are you being dragons? Little Why weird. Why are you being dragons? When at least everyone was there, I still hated it. Okay? And I like dancing. I'm all about the Bridgerton life. We love Bridgerton so much we've podcasted about Bridgerton. Correct. I'm here for the dancing. Go to MaryandBlake.com. Listen to Bridgerton the, with The Mary dragon and Blake. flap your wings dance. And then, hey. I, I hey, was kind of. I, see, here's the hey. thing. I was kind of in on that. The hey thing. I was not. Because all it was doing. Well, well, we'll get into it. We'll yeah, get into it. But I just was, the whole dance, had they not had the dragon dance, had it been a little bit better? But the flapping of the wings is what did it. There's a weird foundation to Stop begin with. Stop flapping wings, okay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Flapping of the wings was a little weird. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay, my great. Alicent, Alicent, Alicent. Yeah. Bow down. Just coming out there and making it happen. Yeah. And And- and, and given the world an excuse to look at her, mm-hmm. where she has kind of stayed hidden. Like, we've seen that. And then all of a sudden, she makes it known that she's had a fight. And you're right, Mary. That is awesome. Totally a cool move. Like, like, that's a flex right there. Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a flex for the ages. Because I'm, I'm sure that the world at that point really hasn't seen somebody do that quite like that. So, you know, there's no Cersei. You know, at this point. Yes, correct. Uh, and Rainus was a person that probably could have been able to do that, but she went back, you know, to her, her own thing. She, you know, she didn't put up a fight. She just did what she did. So for the fact that Allison is able to do that, really cool stuff. Proud of her. All right. So uh, for me, my good is, uh, I, I've i said it and I'll say it again, Claire Kilner. Oh, man. I really appreciate the job that she is doing and you know whether it is highlighting the birds uh in the at the beginning of the episode before damon kills his wife like this that like there's just this really peaceful beautiful setting mm. um or um you know like the rain uh and, and the storms as as the ship arrives to driftmark uh and, and all the stuff that's happening with that. Mm-hmm. Um, or the genuinely stunning visuals of Renera and Lenore walking on the beach. Yes. I loved that one. Genuinely stunning. Talking about hot dogs. <laughs> There's just some like some beautiful imagery here. And we've talked about Rings of Power in a sense like that show is just gorgeous to look at. But some of it is CGI and some of it's manufactured for the sake of having gorgeous cinematography. Mm -hmm. However, in this particular case, the scene of Rhaenyra and Lenore walking down the beach is just genuinely great beauty. Like, and that's just real. Yeah. That's happening in live time. That is in camera. That's, hey, this is stunning. Let's do this. Uh as opposed to it being manufactured. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you have to appreciate it when you see it. And you have to call it out when you see it. And Claire Kilner, that's why I say, I feel like Claire Kilner gets it. And I like her direction. Yeah. All right. My bad 
is the confusion leading up to Christian, uh, uh, Sir Kristen meeting, uh, murdering Joffrey. Um, that was his name. That's his name, Joffrey. Of course it was. I know, I know. Of course it was. It was unclear as to what was happening. And I imagine that's probably by design. Yeah, I was just going to say, isn't that the point? Yeah, that's the point. Uh, I get it. Though, I don't know, it just felt like something was happening and we weren't sure what it is. Then all of a sudden it came out and and I just, I I was like, okay, is is he beating up Damon? Is, who is, is Damon beating up somebody? Like, I just didn't know. I, I wish I had more of an indication that Sir Kristen was moving toward the direction. And even if there was a misdirect, like if you thought that Sir Kristen was beating up Damon, like that's fine. Or if you thought he was be- beating up Jason Lannister, also fine. I love that this is your bat. I love when we like completely see things differently because I loved that I didn't know who was in the fight. Yeah, like, and I get it. I, and I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm, I just, I wish I had just a little bit more of an indication that it was Sir Kristen doing something. Like if you see him like seething at something and then just going into the scrum. I did see something and you missed it. Oh, fair enough. Okay, I did not. When Joffrey comes over and says, hey, I like that hot dog. Yeah. And I guess uh, the, the princess likes your hot dog. So let's just chill out and not cause a ruckus and we can have a circus every day. Yeah. Then the shot goes, Joffrey walks by Sir Kristen Cole and it goes, scrolls, the the camera angle is then on Sir Kristen Cole. Grabbing his sword. Grabbing his sword. Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. That to me was, watch out. An indication. Yeah. All right, fair enough. He's ready to fight. Fair enough. All right, so my great is, well, I have a tie, actually. And I know you love when I do ties, Mary. <laughs> Your sneaky way of getting an extra talking That's point. true. The first one I just saw and I, I mm, just give it all to me, baby, is Rainus's outfit. Oh, the mini skirt with the boots and the, the, the just what she wears. It is like. I didn't even notice beautiful it. Beautiful stuff. The it's queen just, who wasn't? Yeah. Rain, I didn't, I did not Rainus. even see. I cannot believe you didn't call this out. Like. Like, this is something that you usually see, yeah, and that you usually call out, which is why she was <laughs> like Gwen shocked. Stefani. It was awesome, like nineteen nineties Gwen Stefani. It's just like, very. It w- it just looked dominatrix. No, not dominatrix, but it was just like a like a very like hot pirate. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got it. I'm so it. I I'm just in on it, but uh, my real great. Okay, my real great is the tension of the wedding. Um, I thought that the wedding was – well, I'm sorry, not the wedding, but the the celebration. I thought the celebration was perfectly tense, like perfectly shot. Um, it felt like something was going to explode at any moment. It was masterful. And between the dancing and, uh, and then uh, Joffrey going to talk with um, – uh, what's his name, Sir Kristen, and then, and then Damon showing up with Rhaenyra and clutching her face, and 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 then the haze and the whole thing. It just felt like, hey, my own, something is gonna happen here, and it's just it, it it's just a time bomb, and the show knows that you know that, and the show knows that you have an expectation when it comes to these weddings given the visual language and the story language that Game of Thrones created. So it played with you the entire time. And I loved it. Even when Rhaenyra was talking to Damon, being like, well, why don't you just... Why don't you just marry me? Why don't you... Go ahead. Take out my Kingsguard and you take me dragon. to Dragonstone. Yeah. We'll go right now. Giddy up. Let's do it. And it, of course he doesn't do it. And that's why, like, there was some kind of confusion about because right after that line is delivered, then we get the scrum. Yes. Right. So, is it Damon? Is it somebody else hurting Damon? And that's why I just wish I had just a little bit more of an indication of what's going on. I loved the confusion. But I, but I get it. But regardless, we like it, the the tension, and and that's why I like the hay of it all. Because it felt like every time there was a hay, mm-hmm. it was there was an action, and you were just waiting for something, and that was the timer. 
Uh-huh. And that was the thing that was ratcheting it up constantly. And I loved that. I thought that was excellent. <laughs> Once again, my bad, the dance. Yeah. You're, Mine's is great. You're great. <laughs> the, the wing flapping was weird. I'm not going to lie. Oh, my God. All but, they needed to do was like, <laughs> make a little sound. All right, Mom, are you ready for the small council feedback? Sure am. Let's do it. His Grace has many cares. He entrusts some small matters to us that we might lighten the load. We are the lords of small matters here. All right, here we go. Let's get the first one ready. Hi, Mary and Blake. This is Carrie from Northern California. Um, I'm calling about your latest podcast episode about House of the Dragon and cracking up over Mary confusing the Fines brothers with um, Otto, the actor who plays Otto. <laughs> but you keep saying his first name is Reese. And my question that popped into my head this morning as I'm running late to work was, is this the same Reese who played Hugh Grant's roommate in Notting Hill? If he is, oh my God, how did he get old and I haven't? So I hope you two have a wonderful day. And can't wait to hear your latest episode. But first, I got to watch it. Okay. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. So here I can absolutely tell you that, yes, it is the same actor. Mm -hmm. And he probably got old and you didn't because he's probably partied harder than anybody yes. else that we know. Yes. He feels like, to me, that man will put you onto the table in less than 30 minutes. I love it. <laughs> here for it. So, yes, same guy, same actor. Love him. Hello, Mary and Blake. This is Mashi calling in from Hungary for House of the Dragon Hi, episode Mashi. five. I just want to get this out real quick. I found you guys through your Bridgerton podcast, and then I proceeded to binge Outlander alongside your podcast. Aww. And uh, now I'm here for the House of the Dragon. And uh, thank you very much for the great podcasts. My flame rating is a 4.8. I think this was the best episode of the season so far, alongside maybe episode 3. Uh, here is my GBG, the good Alison's entrance at the welcome receptions. She is not normally my favorite character, but I loved how she found her inner strength mm -hmm. and she came in that green dress and totally agree. it means war. The bad. The CGI at some of the scenes when they were on the ship, it was really bad. And somehow it just really pulled me out of the scene. Agreed. And, um, it confused me. Uh, the great. I am a dancer, so I have to say this. I loved the dance scene. I love uh, how the choreography was uh, done. It looked a bit Kind of like a medieval dance, but also perfectly original. So I absolutely loved and uh, I bow to anyone who did that and everyone who choreographed that. It was perfect. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Meshi. I appreciate Thank that. You. She's calling you out, Mary. She is, but she's, you know, she's a dancer. She knows what she's talking so about. So she does. I don't. <laughs> I don't at all. And <clears throat> I do want to comment too on the stuff with the... Uh, the ship and the CGI and everything. It is hard to do ocean scenery correctly. Did you notice that same lack of quality, Mary, or did you did did it, did you just kind of whistle past? The I whistled graveyard past it. Yeah. All right. I noticed it as well, but like it didn't pull me out. I was fine with that. I, <laughs> um, but it felt like yeah, this could probably could be a little bit better. But, you know, put the money somewhere else, in my opinion. In the dragons. That's what there I want. There we go. Get, put it in the dragons. I think we're in good shape. All right, let's get the next one. Hi, Mary Blake. It's Glow from Methuen. Hey, Glow. I'm giving episode five of House of the Dragon four flames. Sorry, Glow. I got to play the sound as always. Your cousin from Boston. Okay, now we can continue. Because I think the Ceres' doctor is unknowingly killing him. And when the fight broke out during the dancing, no knights stepped up to help until Lionel Strong told his son to get Rhaenyra out of there. Nobleman, huh? I don't think so. Interesting. That's why only four flames. My good is Rhaenyra and Lenore making a pact so they can keep their own lifestyle going. They look like a beautiful couple. That goose and duck analogy was a bit much. Uh, my bad was Joffrey opening up his big mouth. I was upset with Sir Kristen, 
for killing him, but Joffrey was an idiot for talking to him like that in the first place. Do you think Kristen attacking him was a hate crime because he's gay or because he didn't want their liaison to be common knowledge? Like, great were the Valerians making their entrance, loved their outfits, gorgeous. The King's Doctor is a total quack. Oh, my God, get him out of there. Get the new doctor on him. <laughs> Sir Gerald, Lady Rhea's cousin, looked like he could kill Damon with his bare hands when he confronted him. Yes. Damon is so smug. Fun to watch, but he's on my shite list. <laughs> and I think Lady Rhaenyra, Rhaenyra, Lady Rhea was very hot. I don't know what's the matter with Damon. What a wedding. No chicken dance. <laughs> um. He, you know, first of all, I, I like the stuff with Rhea. I think we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but going back to your question, Glow, I don't think it was a hate crime because he was gay. At least I didn't get that interpretation. My sense of it was Sir Kristen is just angry. Yeah, I just took it as I don't want anyone to know my secret. I'm still alive. Like Queen Alicent knows. Yes. And yet I'm still alive. Right. And how did this guy find out? Yeah. I can't let the secret come out. Right. This will, this with this will ruin me. It's one thing if like, you know, I'm just killed and the queen tells people, oh, well, he, he got killed. But like, this guy is a blabbermouth. Yeah. And, and no matter what, this guy is going to have this information. It's always going to be held over Mm -hmm. Sir Kristen's head. So it it doesn't make it right what Sir Kristen did, but it makes it at least understandable. And I would also say, I think it's just one giant big pot of soup. Yep. Right? It's all of it, all together. It's- it, All the feels. It's all the feels. It's, I did this, I shamed myself. The queen, I came out to my queen and said this, unprovoked, by the way. Yeah. And she kept me alive. This guy just calls me out for what I did. And now he's trying to negotiate with the person, uh, you know, I'm supposed to protect. Like, what? No, 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 no. None of this is all happening. Mm-hmm. None of this is happening. And we're we're putting an end to it all. And uh, yeah, I mean, does it make sense for Sir Kristen to do it? No. Like on a practical level, no. But on a personal level, it makes sense. And it feels like I'm just protecting myself and I'm pissed off. And this is how I'm taking out my yeah. anger. So that's how it all felt to me. I get why some people might think that it was like a hate crime, but I did not get that no. sense at all. Same. All right, Marvin, are you ready for your dad's thoughts after last week's oh my gosh. Yes. all-star performance? Here we go. Hey, this is Mary's dad for what may be the last time I appear, given the comments uh, from last week. Uh, in my not knowing what the maester was called and calling him a, a wizard. But anyway. <laughs> he, listened. Uh, he listened. It means he listened. Hi, Dad. <laughs> just know, just know, Mr. Earl, that your segment is probably the most popular segment of this show, number one. Yeah. And number two, I cannot tell you how many people loved every second of what you said. And number three. Dad, you've been texting me every single day. <laughs> how have you not told me? Mary, I listened to the episodes. I know how to download a podcast. Dad. Number four? Number four. It's going into the Mary and Bleak Media Hall of Fame. We should just call my dad Maester. We shouldn't even call him Grampy anymore. <laughs> Maester Grampy. Okay. All right, Dad. All right, here we go. Please keep calling in. Don't, don't give up, Dad. Don't give up. Don't give up. Everybody loves it too much. Please don't Even give up. Even the wizards. <laughs> Especially the wizards. Um, They did it again. They introduced a new character, Rhea, who I think is going to be really interesting. And boom, they kill her off even faster than the <laughs> queen. It's like we hardly knew you. <laughs> and what's going on with Damon having the power to make the horse rear up and throw her back like that? He's got a lot more stuff going on than we know about yet. Maybe he's a wizard. Uh, the king, he's definitely going down. He's getting sick of her all the time. And the key thing that I took away from this, when uh, Sir Kristen tried to run away with Princess Ray- Rhaenyra, and she didn't want any part of it. Yep. Um, 
and he felt really dejected. And then he confessed to the queen what had happened. So he's on her side now. And you notice when they had that fight scene in the wedding, it looked like, uh, you know, he was he was pummeling the uh, the prince's boyfriend there. It wasn't because of what the prince's boyfriend said. It was because he was watching Rhaenyra with Damon, and he realized, I've just been played, and she really loves him. And that's why he took out all this aggression oh. on the, the poor dudes. Oh, it looks like he got cut off. Uh, Dad, you only got a few seconds. Get, Always call back. Yeah. Always call back because you can have multiple phones. Yeah, you, we, we make the exception for you. <laughs> oh, well, I like this That's take. That's awesome. This is a great take that Sir Kristen saw that he got played and he's watching. He's saying everyone's Damon. hot dog is in this barbecue. <laughs> I didn't know this. Everyone's hot dog's in that bun. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, very interesting stuff. Oh my gosh, Dad. Blowing my mind. Love Blowing this. my mind. So, but please do continue to call back. Yes. Because it's going in the Mary and Blake Media Hall of Fame. By the way, if you haven't checked out the Mary and Blake Media Hall of Fame, it is all of the best moments from our all of our shows, just at uh, the YouTube channel uh, for Mary and Blake Media. So check that out. Uh, all right, Mary. So let's let's dive into this in another way. And that is, I want to ask your opinion about like this kind of small mini movie that we get mm-hmm. uh, at the beginning of the episode that involves Princess Rhea and Damon and how all that was presented. Is this something that you liked? Is this something that you did not like? What are your thoughts about the presentation, how it was written, and the way that it was inserted into the episode? I loved it because I will say House of the Dragon has been super fun. Lots of obvious throwbacks and callbacks to Game of Thrones. But the women are so meek. You know, like, it was such a big deal that Princess Rhaenyra didn't listen and rode her dragon. And, like, this is Game of Thrones world we're talking about. Yes. where, Where we don't play that. There is a child girl on some island that can kick everyone's butt in this this show. Sure. So for us to have a strong, non-dress wearing female character that's also the queen who can ride a horse, you know, well and do all this stuff. I loved meeting her. Mm -hmm. I agree with my dad. You just bring her in, then you slay her. What do we do it here? (laughs) But she wasn't significant. It's what it's now Um, given Damon that is the significance of it and I love that I love that he was able to just break I don't think he was planning on her breaking her neck right away he definitely planned on doing something yeah my sense is that he just showed up not knowing exactly what he was going to no, do. No, I mean, like, I don't think he was like, oh, I'm going to do this to the horse, which will make her break Right, her right, right, right. But instead, I maybe it was just, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to walk up to the horse, and if it spooks the horse when she falls, great. If I walk up to her and I just get to give her a piece of my mind, great. And right. then she, she did. She fell, horse on top of her, broken neck. And then she was rude because he could have just left her there to die. He was going to. He was going to leave her. And then she says, oh, I, I knew you couldn't finish. Yeah. Which, again. and Impotent. Because it, it, she's a strong woman. Right. Right. That's the thing. So, and, and this, this is also part of another conversation I want to have about this. And, I, and this is why I found this scene fascinating on multiple levels. One, she's actually a very pretty lady. And he alluded to the fact that she wasn't. Number two. She's also I pictured a mountain troll. I absolutely did too. And she was far from that. And yep. I'm not sitting there saying, well, her value is based on her looks. I'm just saying the way that the show established the character, like he said, I'd rather F a sheep. No, he just, no, he wants to be with someone who looks just like him. Fair. But also the reason why he doesn't like her isn't necessarily because he'd rather F a sheep because she's ugly. It's because she's a strong character. Mm-hmm. And he can't perform with her or or couldn't perform in the same way with her because she says to him, are you ready to finally consummate our marriage? Mm. Because we never did. So that then speaks to the scene that we had in the last episode where he could not perform with 
uh, Renera mm-hmm. because she took control, right? So you can see how all of this is developing for 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 Damon and how this is commenting on his character. Then there's another layer here that I really love too. Damon doesn't do anything. Like he goes up to the horse and he puts his hand out and the horse rears a little bit, but he didn't do anything that would suggest he was being hostile. She was talking. She was the one that was being rude. And as he approached, she was the one who went to grab her bow or whatever it was. And when she moved so quickly, that's when the horse rears really heavy and she falls off. Damon doesn't do a thing. Yeah. And then when he discovers that she is paralyzed, puts his foot on her arm, he's going to walk away and then she antagonizes him even further. (sighs) And then that's what he does what he does. I loved this scene because it reminded me of when, as you said, he was speaking to Viserys, when he didn't deny the fact Mm -hmm. that he slept with Rhaenyra, but he also didn't say, I did. People are making decisions around him based on their interpretation of him. Mm -hmm. That is fascinating to me. And that's why I loved that scene so much. Um, I get why there's probably some book purists out there that are like, well, well, Damon this and blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, like, whatever. It makes sense to the character. It makes sense that he would have the balls to show up in the veil and be like, what are we doing? What's going on? Makes sense. And it makes sense that he would walk away. And it makes sense that he would finish her off with the rock. But it would also make sense if he just talked and left. Like, that's why I love this character. Because anything that this guy does feels right. Like no. it feels right to the character. Oh, okay. Which, yeah. which, um, to me, alludes to the fact that this char- character is chaos. Because if you say whatever he yes. does is in line with the character, that is chaos. Uh, yes, absolutely. If he can do anything, if he can do anything, that is chaos. Yeah. That well, and and again, we have to talk about the the a different definition, right? The different definitions of what is good. Okay, what is good to the person is not necessarily good for the TV show and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Good television is based on possibility and what that possibility, how that is reflected in the relationships that are shared within the universe that the show is trying to uh, exemplify. Mm -hmm. That's why I say Damon is a fantastic character because anything is possible. And that chaos creates good television and drama based on the relationships that he's already forged. And you can even see that in how the series reacts when Damon just shows up to the party. Hey, I know I've been banished, but like, it's a wedding. What are you going to do? And I'm going to show up. I forgot he was banished. (laughs) Oh, my God. Gosh, why didn't he get kicked out by Sir Kristen Cole? Well, what's he going to do? Or Graham McTavish. What's he going to do? They, 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 Say, are they going to kick him out right away? Maleficent, you weren't invited. Ma- Maleficent. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Bippity boppity boo. But it also. Isn't. But, that's, that's Cinderella. No, that's true. But it also goes to show you that Viserys keeps compromising, which then um reflects more on his personal reflection when he was speaking with um uh his his new hand uh, Lionel Strong when he's like yeah you know I didn't really do anything I wasn't really tested and I just kind of existed and I kept the peace you really can't I'm not going to be in any jerk. songs I'm not a selfish jerk but what that does comment on though is his is the series consistent um, compromising and how that has forged him as a king. Like, for the fact of the matter, well, the fact that House Valerian is going to make sure that the grandkids that Lenor and Rhaenyra has, their last name is going to be Valerian I thought he said no. That we're not going to agree to. Well, that. what he agreed to 
was, yes, you, they will have Valerian as their last name until one of them ascends to the throne. And then when they ascend the throne, that person will have the name Targaryen. It is always going to be a Targaryen on the throne. Why didn't they just hyphenate it? It's a big deal. It is a big deal. It's a huge deal because once a Valerian has that name, I mean, how can anybody ever say like, yeah, that's a Targaryen? Like it will always be a Valerian at that point. Mm -hmm. The Targaryen line will, at least in name at that point, will probably end unless another Valerian is a queen and marries a Targaryen, a male, you know, like, and then they will assume. Rhaenyra should just name the kid's first name Targaryen. <laughs> Targaryen Valerian? Yeah. <laughs> Julia Gulia. Problem solved, Dad. <laughs> Julia Gulia. <laughs> oh, man. Just, it, it's an interesting thing that happened um, between these two families and how the king seems to compromise in situations where he probably shouldn't. Mm. He probably should not have let Damon into that wedding. No! He's timed out! I'm sorry, you're grounded! No, you cannot go to the party on Saturday <laughs> night. But mom, please, I'm hungry. Oh, well, you should have thought about that. Yep. yep. But mom, everyone's gonna be there and I'm gonna have FOMO. Sucks to suck. <laughs> you made your bed. Um. So, let's talk about... Was there not a guest list? And like a do not enter list? Did they just let any jabroni in? No. You don't see commoners off the street inside the hall. Mm. Who was the bouncer? <laughs> Who's the guy up front with the with the card? Someone reader? messed out. Yeah, with, the, with in, in front of the uh in fr- in front of the red rope, you know? Who's yep. that guy? That Letting the twenty two year old girls in yep. and you're sitting there waiting in the cold, shivering, like little match girl. No, twenty two they would be able to go in. Oh the twenty <laughs> like twenty two year old? Girl? Yeah, the twenty two year olds are going yeah. in and you you know, the 40-year-old. No, it's when they're... Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I'm getting it. See? Yeah. See, I got you. I'm not 22. Yeah, got there you it. go. Oh. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's talk about um, the the Alicent and the words from her father and how he seems to be trying to prepare her for what's coming. And yes, she's convinced by her father that something is happening, um, but it seems to me more that, um, that she was really convinced when, what's the heck, what the heck's his name? Chris, Sir Kristen Cole confesses. Yeah. Like that's when, oh my God, I was, I was totally played here. Uh, were you, were you buying all the things that Otto Hightower one hundred percent was saying. You know, I gotta tell you, Otto Hightower, str- slithering through and through. Okay, obviously, yes. But he gave his daughter solid advice. At first, when I heard that, I said, "Oh, come on, stop being, stop being such a worry boy." No, it's true. We Renera does not have love for anybody. Okay, she doesn't even have a stuffed animal. She doesn't even have a pet. <laughs> That she treats sure. with respect. She's, well, I mean, she's dragon, got a dragon, but like yeah. I kind of see the dragon as she doesn't go and cuddle it. That's true. She doesn't have a relationship with her dad. The only person she really cared about was her mom, and she's dead. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace. Peace. Um, she doesn't. She doesn't have the ability to say she loves Sir Kristen Cole. Sir Kristen Cole says, "Let's marry out of love." He says, "I love you," basically, mm-hmm. and she doesn't say it back. She just kind of laughs and said, "No, thank you. I want lots of hot dogs." Um. And you can be like my favorite. We can we can cuddle. Mm-hmm. And we can do whatever we want. Um, so even if Renera came clean and said yes, I slept with Sir Kristen Cole because I love him. I feel like Allison would have had more respect for that than you just straight up lying to me. Sure. But Allison knows Renera's playing around doing inappropriate stuff no matter what with Damon. Mm-hmm. She's marrying uh, her cousin. She can't trust her. So for her dad to say, your children are going to be at risk of being murdered Mm -hmm. forever. Forever. Mm -hmm. As soon as she has a kid, she's going to come after yours. I would I would pull an Allison right away. Sure. She got Mama Bear that situation. Yep. And now she's got Hunk, Sir Kristen Cole on her side. 
Maybe he can be her snuggle buddy. Yeah, this feels to me like there is a big switch happening here. And now do do And now, you know, Sir Kristen Cole is is no longer uh going to be loyal to Rhaenyra uh in any way. And now he owes everything. His 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 owe, his debt has been transferred from um his debt has been transferred from Rhaenyra to Allison as a result of all of this. So we know that there's going to be a massive time jump between the next two, like this episode and the next one. Yes. How does Sir Kristen Cole still have a job? Because now he... Like, how is, how is Alicent going to go oh, I see. and I see be able to saying. say the new, you know, prince, essentially. Yep. His bestie, his favorite knight, was just killed by Sir Kristen Cole. Like, does Sir Kristen Cole have to make up a lie? That's a good How point. How do you keep this loose cannon? That's a good point. Around. Especially when the future king, you just killed his buddy, as you as you yes. said. So, like, how's how's that still allowed to be a thing? Agreed. Fair. Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm looking forward to that explanation. I don't know. Will we get one since there's such a big time jump? Yeah, do I you think, think we will. they'll have to give us one? Yeah, okay. I think so. I, I think they kind of have to address that in some fashion. Like there's gonna be a conversation between Laner and 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 uh Renera or so, something's gonna happen. I mean, no matter what, Allison is gonna make it happen, so he's okay. Yes. Uh and then a follow-up to all of this is And then how much more is he owing her? Oh, well, he owes her everything now because she's the one who saves him from killing himself. Yeah, but also he's still going to have this job. At, right. But that's what, yeah. But I'm saying like, not only does she save him from killing himself, she keeps this secret, but also probably some people, Graham McTavish, you know, would sit mm-hmm. down and say, okay, uh, it's your work evaluation day. <laughs> Can we just talk about what happened? Yeah. You know, um, so the, my follow up question to all of this, Mary, is did... King Viserys make the right choice in firing Sir Otto Hightower. Yes. And is Otto Hightower all that bad? Yes. For making the choices that he did. Oh, I, from whose perspective? Well, just your perspective. I don't love anybody yet, so I'm. I don't care. Like I'm not. I from from my standpoint. I'm. Everyone's just rooting for themselves. Well, I guess you so can just look at it Otto's, from a logic point of view. Like, did Otto has one thing in mind, and that is making sure that his daughter is safe and that their kid is safe. Do I think that his making sure the country is in the best hands is bad? No. I think I, I think he's done the right thing in his mind yeah. for the country. I think he knows this family is a bunch of Looney Tunes mm-hmm. and that chaos is going to ensue when mm-hmm. Renera takes over the crown. He knew Viserys needed to take a new wife. My daughter's nice. She also, I can give her tips and tricks. I can be her coach, mm-hmm. you know, her third, third baseline coach or something. <laughs> so I don't think he did anything wrong. Seeing her... Alicent left alone in the Red Keep the way that she was after he rides off in the rain was very sad. Mm -hmm. Very, very sad. And um, I... You you got a real sense of her loneliness and how small she was. And it's important that, you know, she was framed in that big archway the way that she was with nobody else in the frame. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that building and that archway is just massive and she's just tiny in this little... It, she's tiny in this big picture. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I love that visual storytelling aspect, but then to take that and then to contrast that when she shows up to the celebration, she is there green. She takes up most of the picture. Everybody stops. King even stops. Well, he has to stop because he was in the middle of a speech and she rudely interrupted. No, I know. But I'm saying like to to go from that where she's just little in the frame in this big archway Mm -hmm. alone to being alone, but larger in frame wearing this big green dress, which is, as we was explained, is what the color is used when they want to call the high towers want to call their bannermen to war. Mm -hmm. Um, That is a huge contrast visually. And uh, that that is that is an asset 
that again, I think Claire Kilner uses to, to tell you that things are changing here. Yeah. What did you think about the actual like explanation of the, the, the color use of green and the bannerman and everything? Was that clunky or do you feel like it was? Oh, I loved it. Okay, I yeah. absolutely loved him being like, oh my God, guess yeah. what that means? People do that all the time at weddings. Yep, I agree. All the time. I, I totally agree. All right. The last thing I want to talk about with, about with you, Mary, is the use of the rat at the end. Oh, which I pointed out to you. Yes, you did. And it is the actually rat something. rat eating blood. Yeah. And it's something that we actually pointed out last episode with all the rat imagery so and even even Damon calling Renera mm-hmm. a rat, street rat, a street rat. <sighs> My question to you, Mary, is what do you think they're trying to refer to with the rat showing up after the wedding, after it, it, uh, basically a shotgun wedding at this point. Well, what does a rat symbolically mean? Um, well, let's uh, let's take a look. I will look it up as you vamp about um, what you think it means in your perspective. Is it something that is is reflective of Renera? Is it reflective of the Targaryens? Is it reflective of what do you think? I see it reflective of Damon. Uh, in what way? I think Damon's the rat. We see a rat near the dragon skulls. We see a rat over the bedpost with the king and queen, but it's while Damon is out with Rhaenyra. Mm-hmm. And now we see the rat eating up the blood. Um, so to me, the rat is Damon, um, but the rat signifies that there is someone just waiting for this to fall apart mm-hmm. who will nibble at whatever they can get. Um, that they're going to bring sickness and and vile yet be able to hide and you don't even know it's there, yeah. but that they're continually eating and getting strengthened um, during when people don't even know. So the, the humble rat has a pretty formidable reputation. Often rats represent filth, poor hygiene, criminality, sickness, malaise, and... Death. The belief that rats spread diseases is likely contributed to this symbolic association, as is the fact that rats are common household pests who hide in places that are dark or that are not kept clean. In many cases, rats are used as derogatory symbols of people in low social status. And actually, Freud believed that rats to be a phallic symbol. He also used that they he also said that they uh, represented dirty children, screaming, crying and biting vermin. And within this context, rats can symbolize unwanted children or unwanted siblings. Oh, am I on to something? Absolutely. That 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 all of this <laughs> it, and the fact that the rat is consuming the blood, which means that all of this is going to be wrapped in the bloodline of the Targaryens. And the Targaryen is it, 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 the 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 rat is consuming the blood from uh, uh, Joffrey. Joffrey, and uh, the unwanted conflict that is about to come is going to portend a lot of death, and it's based on the blood of what just happened in this wedding. Yep, really cool stuff. Agreed. Of course, it also it also it's also is somewhat of a visual callback to the end of The Departed, that film. Uh, where you know Martin Scorsese uses the rat symbolism at the end of that film once uh, okay. Matt, hashtag spoilers um, Matt Damon's killed by Mark Wahlberg at the end okay. of the film. So that is that. All right. Anything else that you would like to speak about in this episode, my darling? I think we hit all the major points that I wanted to. I, I'm worried about King Viserys. Mm-hmm. I honestly thought he was dead. Like a lot. Of I times. thought he was going to die. <laughs> no, I, I just thought well, now's the moment. Yep. Oh, now's the moment. He's bleeding, you know, and then he collapses at the end. And notice how he collapses as soon as the wedding is over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure that's in there for dramatic effect, but you can also get somewhat meaning out of that. In that, um, you know, he 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 finally did the thing to help his family. But as we can imagine, he's going to be fine, and that'll be that. His his whole body is now being consumed by this. Sickness. By the sickness, whatever it is, that death scene was so disgusting. The f- the jaw dropping, I would say. Oh, uh, the <laughs> <laughs> good one, Mary. Nerd! I like it. Uh, all right, anything else? Um, no, that's it. I'm just grossed out. 
All right, who are, you, who are you rooting for, and who is the bad guy? Ooh, okay. I'm now rooting for Alicent. I am Team Alicent. Okay. I hope she gets to have a bedtime buddy with Sir Kristen Cole. Gotcha. All right, who's the bad guy? The bad guy right now, meaning who do I think is up to no good? Yes. Um, let me get back to you about that. How okay. about you? Uh, person I'm rooting for, Alicent. I'm rooting for her. Why don't you just say Lionel Strong? Okay? Mm. Just, just pick somebody, pick someone of your own. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. You know what? I'll I'll root for Renera. Oh, okay. I'm nice. rooting for Renera. Okay. Cool. Uh, because that's what this is going to come down to. Renera versus Allison. Cool. Absolutely. Gonna I'm here happen. For it. Uh bad guy. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, first is Lara Strong. Um, Why? Because he's the one being Lady Whistledown, creeping to everybody. Oh, I, he, he was, uh, she... No, he, I'm saying Little Whistledown was Joffrey. Oh, well, whatever. The, this guy... He figured it out. He Joffrey did, figured it out. Joffrey figured it out. I, I agree. Has not figured it out. No, Lara Strong was the one that said, hey, she was delivered tea. What's going on with that? Is she all right, mm-hmm. Renera? Right. And, and she, he's going around, bip-bopping, like bip-bopping little stuff. You know stuff. whose fault that is? Who? The wizards. Yes, it totally is the wizards' that's fault. That's the way... That's the maester. Yep. T told somebody he made tea. Yep. Somebody somewhere found out that the tea was made and delivered. Oh, see, there's lots of rats. Lots of rats everywhere. Lots of rats. So I, this guy, Lara Strong, uh, he, he ain't right. I like this. He, he's 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 mm, opening his mouth a little too much. I like it a lot. And it's gonna get him in trouble, but he's gonna cause some big problems. Love it. The other guy that I think I gotta watch out for here too, mm-hmm. Otto Hightower. He's gonna come back. He's coming back. He gets to have grandpa privileges. He can at least come back. Hey, if Damon could come back. For the wedding? He, this guy's definitely coming Otto can back. come back for Christmas. You know as soon as he found out that Damon showed up, well, I'm going back there too. Yeah, I'm, I'm coming for Easter. Yeah. <laughs> Better set a place for, for me. <laughs> so that is that. All right. Anything else you want to talk about, my love? I don't have anyone right now aside from Damon. Okay. Now I'm out. At, he's my bad. You're out on Damon now. Hey, it's okay. See, I don't love anybody. You're all you're all in trouble. Ooh, Sir Kristen Cole. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I think you picked the good one. Uh, Damon, by the way, now because uh, Rhea has passed away, Damon is now in line to inherit Runestone, which is in the Vale. Big deal. Don't downplay this. It was it was mentioned in the conversation, and it it was kind of a blink is and you miss thing. Big hole place. Well, the Vale is that yes, but he is set to to get a place in, in the Vale. Okay. Yes, and that's Runestone. Okay. Um. Don't sleep on this. Just like I told you, don't sleep on the crab feeder. Mm-hmm. Don't sleep on this either. This is going to be a big deal. Got a big feeling about this. Yes. All right. Here we go. Let's close it out. We want to thank you so incredibly much. For tuning into this episode. Honestly, you you're what makes this world keep on ticking for us. And if we bring you some enjoyment, we would love for you to go to jointhenerdclan.com. Yeah, go to jointhenerdclan.com. That is our community. You don't want to miss out over there. Lots of cool things happening, including Blake's Book Club, knee-jerk reactions, early access to our podcasts, and tons of other stuff that's happening there too. So you don't want to miss out. And also, make sure you check out Mary and Blake on all the social media platforms, whether that is Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, or you can email us at maryandblakemedia at gmail.com. And of course, don't forget, too, that if you want to provide a voicemail for you so you can be heard in the small council, you can go to maryandblake.com, just click on the voicemail button, and you'll be able to leave us one right there. Friends, I am putting on a green dress right now. I am calling my men to arms. Okay. My banners are being raised. Please head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a written rating and review. All right. As not only did we get our first negative review. We did. But it was written. Ready? Really? Let's hear it. I love title. bad reviews. Let's do it. Title says, Annoying Host. Sweet. By Amy True Crime Review. Oh, okay. Amy True Crime Review says, Guy is especially annoying. Nice. Trying to be so polished and comes across as a douche. I don't think I'm that polished. No, I agree. <laughs> so, so, lady, whatever. whatever Amy, you want. Amy True Crime Review. That's Amy, who it is. Amy True Crime Review. You're already wrong. You're right. I ain't polished. 
I don't know what you're telling but me. Basically, friends, we need you to go in there and write some good. Is that reviews. the only thing that she said? That's all she said. She ends with the word douche. I'm a douche. All right. Skadoosh. <laughs> Skadoosh. <laughs> well, yes, please, ladies and gents, if you do find that I'm not a douche, uh, and don't you, don't use the word douche in your review. Don't say yeah. Blake is not a douche in yeah. your title. That wouldn't go over well. It probably Write something wouldn't. uplifting. Yeah, sure. Why not? You know, be positive. You want to attract good things into your life, That's right? Right. That's positive, right. positive, positive thoughts. energy. So I'm, I'm wearing my green dress. Let's get some positive energy in those reviews. Yes. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. A douche. <laughs> I should have said my name was douche. Damn it. I got it. <laughs>